Tony Hall's been Director General of the BBC for 100 days now as of this Saturday. Um, some say he's had a bit of a low profile at a time when the BBC needs maybe someone leading more of the front to help boost morale. But he has taken some quite quick initiatives and some early, um, um, early decisions. For example, he has um, introduced new uh, maximum uh, limits for severance payouts of £150,000 um, in the, you know, anticipating, no doubt, the controversy that has arisen this week. Um, and he also took the difficult decision to axe the digital media initiative. Tony Hall to took over at a sensitive time. You know, his predecessor, George and Twistle, had lasted in the job for just 54 days in the wake of all the controversy of his handling of the Jimmy Savile scandal. Well, in New York, the interesting thing is that the BBC story is a story at all, because most people here have never heard of Jimmy Savile or second tier members of the, ex of the executive committee at the BBC or something called the Digital Media Initiative and couldn't really care less. But the reason is that nine months ago, Mark Thompson was named chief executive of the New York Times company. And ever since he moved from the BBC, the flagship paper, the New York Times, has covered him quite aggressively. So they are still following every step of this story. Lord Patton appeared before the Public Accounts Committee this week and was quizzed quite heavily by MPs over what he knew about the severance payouts to um, former senior managers and who was involved in that process. To recap, over about three years at the end of December, um, the BBC paid out about £25 million to 150 managers. Lord Patton was quite firm saying that the only executive pay that um, the BBC Trust regulates is that of the Director General and that it doesn't get directly involved in pay of others. He also was very insistent that they were told by the BBC and, in, and he alluded heavily towards Mark Thompson that none of the payouts would be beyond contractual terms. Now this irked Mark Thompson. The question of whether the BBC sagas would affect Mark Thompson's ability to do his job at the New York Times has been hanging over him since he arrived. And it is a big job that he's taken on here. He's got to articulate a brand new digital strategy for the New York Times at a time when print advertising and even digital advertising are declining at the core paper. He's got to sell the Boston Globe. He's got to rebrand the International Herald Tribune. He's got to build international and video revenues. And at the same time, the controlling Salzburger family, which hasn't had a dividend for several years and is looking forward to uh, some better cash flow from this business, um, is very acutely aware of the reputational risks if anything blows up uh, back at the BBC that questions Mark Thompson's abilities as a manager. Tony Hall was very quiet in the Public Accounts Committee and I think he's still in his honeymoon period as a lot of these um, incidences didn't happen on his watch. The biggest challenge hanging over Tony Hall over the next year or two is that of charter renewal and the whole renewal of the BBC license fee. I mean, those discussions are likely to um, be started next year. And if he's going to have the best card to play in those discussions, he's got to make sure that the BBC is in the best position on executive pay, that there's no controversy on severance payouts, and really make it look that um, it's offering value for money for licensee payers and that it's regaining public trust of the licensee payers. If he can get the BBC in that strong position, they'll be in a much stronger position to maybe even push for um, you know, in, uh, inflation rises on the, the license fee. That would probably be the best outcome he could expect.